Okay, so we're back to work on our memory game, and so far all we've done is kind of set up the game board. So we've got a little title here, and we've got some pictures hidden behind these squares. So the next thing we need to do is actually make this game functional, and it's going to require animations, using them in a way that you probably haven't done before. It's not particularly difficult, but it will be a multi-step process. So just hang in with me, pause as you need to, and here we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and close my clip art pane. I really don't need that open right now. So I'm going to go ahead and close it, get rid of it. And instead I'm going to come over here to animations and open my animation pane. And that'll allow me to see all of the animations that I'm adding to my game. Now we're going to actually add two animations to each of these squares. The first animation, if a child clicks on the square, it will reveal, give a little peek at the picture that's behind the square. The second time that they click on it, the square will actually go away and that would be the matching part of the game. So we'll go ahead and start. We're going to click on this first square and the animations we're going to use are actually exit animations. So the green ones here are entry animations, the yellow ones are emphasis animations, and then if we click the down arrow here we'll see these red exit animations. So those are what we're going to use. I'm going to start by using a shrink and turn animation. See how that disappears like that? So I'm going to use that and then I want you to pay attention to what happens over here in the animation pane. Notice it's saying I've added an animation to rectangle 4. That's going to be very important to us. So this rectangle right here is called rectangle 4. And we're going to need that information for later. So each time you go through and start adding these animations, just watch in the pane to see which rectangle you're working with. All right, so I've begun by just adding this basic shrink and turn animation. But remember that I just want this to be a peak, first of all, out the picture that's behind it. I don't want to see it permanently at this point. And secondly, remember that uh, I want them to click on the square in order to reveal that. So we're going to go into the drop down uh, menu right here next to where it says rectangle 4. And we're going to come down to timing. That opens this little dialog box here. And the first thing I'm going to do is slow down this animation just a bit. I'll put that at a two second animation. The second thing I'm going to do is click this little box that says rewind when done playing. So what will happen is that will actually put the square back after it does its animation. Third, I'm going to click here where it says triggers. And I'm going to click start effect on click of. Now remember, we're working with rectangle 4. So I'm coming down here, scrolling down and finding rectangle 4. So what I'm saying is when I click on rectangle 4, I want this animation to happen and then undo itself. That's what I've just done. So I'm going to click OK here. And you'll see that my animation pane here changes. Now it says trigger rectangle 4. So when I click on rectangle 4, this is what's going to happen. Your rectangle numbers may be different, so be patient, be calm, uh, and just work with the numbers that you have showing up over here. All right, I'm going to add a second animation to this rectangle now. So I'm going to click on it again, and this time I'm going to come up here to where it says Add Animation. That allows me to add a second animation to the same object. So this time I'm going to add a Fly Out animation to that rectangle 4. And that makes the little box disappear. Once again, I'm going to come into Timing, slow it down just a touch. This time I'm not going to rewind it because I do want it to disappear permanently. And then I'm going to click Triggers, Start Effect on Click Of, and choose Rectangle 4. OK. So I'm going to go through and finish adding these animations to my squares. When I come back, we'll add a couple of extra little features and see how this game works.